welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some MIV whole stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first MIV whole story. This says, am I the equal for no longer walking my friend home to her dorm after she rejected me? So you're gonna let her be in danger because you got your itty bitty feelings hurt or was she a bitch because if she was a bitch then she can get fucked but if you're just being an asshole i have my suspicions let's see what the story says i 21 male have been friends with annie 21 female for three years now since the start of college we usually chill at one of our friends places every saturday night with our friend group after we're done i walk her to her dorm first before heading back to my dorm this has been the default and i never really thought too much of it a month ago i asked her out but she just wanted to remain friends it did not bother me too much but i obviously wanted to cut back on our friendship a bit we were still amicable and part of the same friend group and still joked around with each other however i've stopped walking her back to her dorm and just walked back to my dorm the first couple of weeks she did walk back on her own to her dorm however last week she asked if i could walk her back because she was extremely scared walking alone at midnight especially when she was drunk i told her to just get an uber or ask someone else because i was getting too tired to walk her to her place and then walk back to my place the conversation was sort of awkward and we left it at that am i the Oh, so you did get your itsy bitsy little feelings hurt. So you're telling me that you can walk her home every other day and you're magically not too tired, but the second that she says she doesn't want anything further with you than just a friend and she tells you that nicely, you immediately start letting a drunk girl walk home alone? How would you feel if something happened to her? If someone took advantage of her while she was in that state? What if someone didn't take advantage of her, but she just tripped in her drunken state? and fell down and got a concussion and stayed there all night because no one found her until the morning and then she didn't make it all because you got your itsy bitsy feelings hurt you're a huge fucking asshole let's see what the comments are. we also have an update on this and from what i skimmed things don't get better but let's see what the comments say bro is she still your friend it doesn't sound like it because friends treat friends better than that Next says, this is what hit home to me too. To my eyes, it doesn't seem like he was ever truly her friend. I have a close female friend who loves horror movies, but she's always on edge and jumping at shadows afterwards. We've known each other for 20 years. Every single time we see a horror movie, I walk her to her car, to the restroom, wherever she wants to go. And when she drives home, I check that she's gotten in safely. Not because of any romantic feelings, completely platonic relationship. I don't swing that way. And neither of us is attracted to each other in the slightest but she's my friend she has always been there for me too i care about her i care that she feels safe and that is one small thing i can do to show it i can't imagine knowing someone i care about is scared and still letting them walk alone she said she was terrified to walk home alone at night and you're like call an uber or ask somebody else i'm too tired now i'm starting to see why she didn't want to fucking date you you prick Let's get on to the update. This says, okay, I was the a-hole. I apologized to my friend this morning and explained to her my feelings because I guess I haven't been too upfront about it after she rejected me. I told her I wanted to cut down on our one-on-one -on -one time and that's why I didn't walk her home last week, but that was obviously the wrong way to go about it. I was extremely drunk that night and I did not think too clearly about it when she asked me to walk her home. I told her from... From next time on, she could ask me to walk her home and I would, but I would prefer if she had someone else walk her home and to consider me as sort of a last resort. She did tell me I had nothing to apologize for and that she understood and that it was her fault and she shouldn't have just sprung it onto me at the last minute. Okay, so I guess I'm sort of understanding him saying, can you use me as a last resort because I'm trying to keep my distance from you because you don't reciprocate my feelings. That I can sort of understand, but I feel like that's an excuse you're tacking on to the actions that you had done previously, but that wasn't your original motivation. You were just pissy, but that's my opinion. I expected the whole conversation to be super awkward, but it was not. And she seemed very happy and sort of emotional about it. We joked around after that. We're not the type to be serious with each other. We joke around a lot. So I'm super happy things are at least not awkward between us anymore. 
Yeah, I think she's being gracious. Let's see what Reddit has to say. It was magically her fault. She even said so. You do know that this isn't the first time someone has posted this exact same script on Reddit, right? They find out they were a major a-hole, then suddenly have a conversation with the person that they were an a-hole to, and they get not only an apology, but get told that it was the other person's fault. It's always such a made-up fantasy. I hope your friend group wisens up to your dickishness. And next says, yeah, I don't believe a word of the OP's up update. I mean, it could be falsified. It seems a little too hunky-dory. Everything is great here in Pleasantville for the situation, but that's my opinion. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. Am I the evil for not wanting to reconnect with my family who disowned me 22 years ago? I'm sorry, disownment is a one-way street and I ain't coming back from that personally. But let's see what the story says. Super long story short of a story that happened 22 years ago. I'm now a 41 male. I'm one of four kids growing up in Adelaide, Australia. I have an older brother and two younger sisters. A couple of days after my 19th birthday, the daughter, who we considered like family, of a close family friend of ours accused me of SA during my birthday party. My family took her Side of the story and I was disowned and kicked out of the family house. I then had to move in with my aunt and her family who lives in another city, Melbourne, for eight, eight hours away and had to rebuild my life from the ground up again. Fast forward 22 years later, I went and finished university, met my now wife, and now I have a family of my own with two young kids, 10-year-old and 7-year-old. My aunt and her husband have been my rock throughout this whole time. They believed in me and even helped me in those early years to get back on my feet. Even today, my family would be going over to their house on a weekly basis for family meals with her family. Fast forward to about three weeks ago in late March, my auntie called me to tell me to come over as my father and siblings were at their house and they wanted to speak to me. I was reluctant, but my auntie strongly advised I come as I want to hear what they ha now have to say. When I arrived at auntie's place and sure enough, there were my old family siblings and all. They were just so much older now, but it was definitely them. Cut the long story short and give you the gist of it. I asked them what they wanted. My father and siblings spent the next few minutes apologizing and explaining to me that they just recently found out from the horse's mouth that the essay accusation was all false. They started crying, begging me for my forgiveness and hoping we could reconnect. When they had their turn to speak, I just calmly told them no and got up to leave. My older brother begged me to stay and try to work this out. He said we were family. When I heard him say this, I just told them all, no, you're not. They're just strangers to me now. My real family were my aunt and her family. Her sons were my siblings. They were my best men slash groomsmen at my wedding. I'd even changed my surname to my aunt's husband surname. When my father heard this, he completely broke down. I don't care. I thought I would be angry or something along those lines, but I wasn't. I felt nothing for these people. They were just strangers to me now. I didn't even ask about how the truth came out. I didn't want to know. I didn't care. I told them never to contact me again. They're dead to me as I was to them all those years ago. At this point, everyone from my old family just broke down and cried. I know their tears were genuine, but again, I felt nothing for them. After this, I just left. My aunt has been checking in on me over the next few days to encourage me to forgive and forget, but I said I had nothing to forgive as these people were strangers to me. She respected my decision. I know I left out a bunch of things in this story, but I tried to write this up a couple of times already and it always turns out too many pages long. So am I the hole for not wanting to reconnect with my family? No, 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 no. I'm sorry, as a mother of two sons, I cannot imagine someone accusing my child, even at 19 years old, he is my child. I cannot imagine someone accusing my child of SA and instead of me going straight to my child and being like, what is this? Explain this to me, please, now. Instead of that, just being like, get the fuck out of my house and I never wanna see you again, you're gone. No, you don't disown your children. You don't send your children away. And you know what? If my son did essay someone, I would explain to him why it was so wrong and how disappointed I was. And then I would drive his ass to the police station myself because part of my love is making sure my children are held responsible for their actions. That's part of my love. I would never protect my child 
from their own mistakes when they're those kind of mistakes. Sure, you fail a test and your teacher says you need to do a special report in order to pass the class and I help you with the report or hell, I do the fucking report for you. Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll save you from those kind of mistakes that are kind of silly in the end of the, at the end of the day. In 10 years, we're not going to care about this stupid report in fifth grade science class. But when it comes to things like SA, the, no, nope. I'm not tolerating that from anyone, even the people that came out of me. Okay. I say you're not the a-hole. Fuck those people. And let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole. They didn't give you a chance and sent you out to the wolves. Can't let two decades go by and then say, yo, oops, water under the bridge, right? Exactly. Fuck yourselves. Next says, this is my basic impression too. It was 22 years ago, not two. Why would the OP want to reopen these wounds after more than two decades? Last says, exactly. It's like rubbing salt on raw scars. They had their chance. It's time to let go of them and not talk to them ever again. They all had their chance because if you were the middle child at, at 19, that meant your older brother was old enough and your two younger sisters would have been old enough in a year or two at the very least to reach out to you and do the right thing i don't even, i don't even have words i don't even have words i say you're not the a-hole i would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story okay this is a not safe for work story if you're somewhere where people can hear you or your kids can hear you please vacate the premises <laughs> This says, am I the hole for avoiding my boyfriend because he said he preferred pink pussy? Can't believe the internet just made me say that out loud. What the fuck? That's like being like, I only like brown areolas. Bitch, they come in all different fucking colors and an areola is an areola, a vagina is a vagina. <sighs> Let's see what the story says. I'm already irritated. This is so embarrassing, so I made a throwaway account. My boyfriend and I have been together for a year now and everything was moving forward smoothly. We had great chemistry and the sex was mind blowing until about two weeks ago when we were having pillow talk after great sex session. Then he opened up and mentioned that he loved pink pussy and that it made him go crazy, that he preferred it. I told him that, that, well, that means the majority of POC girls aren't preferable to him. He shrugged and said that this was what everyone actually preferred, but it doesn't take from the girl. I told him that I disagreed about everybody because not everyone subscribed to the white ideal. He shrugged again. Honestly, I didn't care much about it at the time. Personal preference, I thought. But now I have been avoiding him like the plague. The thought of him gives me the shudders. He has been texting me every day and trying to call, but I am not ready to talk to him yet. I think I am ending things with him, but I don't think it is polite to do it via text when we have been together for a year and I am simply not ready to see him yet. So I have been avoiding him. My friends call me the a-hole, but for different reasons. The majority because I am insecure and felt inferior and dumped a man because of his preference when everything else is great and he loves me. He made it very clear that this preference doesn't have anything to do with what he wants from a partner. I honestly don't think this is the issue here though, that I feel insecure. Others because I didn't react strongly enough, but then again, I don't really think that I had any right to scold someone over their preferences. There's no right and wrong. Have I messed up? I mean, if my husband was like, you know, I just love blondes. They just, there's something about them that just drives me wild. It's okay that you're not blonde though. I just prefer blondes. Bitch, I'm a brunette. If you don't like the way I look, then why the fuck are you with me? If I'm not your preference. And you know what? Maybe I wasn't your preference, but then you met me and fell in love with me and now me and my vagina are your preference. You could say that, but you didn't. Yeah, I'm not so sure I would want to be with this person either. And I definitely wouldn't show them my vagina again because all he's going to be thinking is it's not pink enough for me. There's an update. So I did it and I sent him the text suggested by one of you beautiful Reddit users. He texted me that he wanted to see me and at least he wanted to know what's wrong and if he did anything to make me mad. So I texted, I think we should see other people. 
I'm not a dad, but I love a good pun. He answered about an hour later. He said he wanted to come over to talk. So I guess we were having the talk later this evening. Wish me luck. Yeah, good luck. That's going to be uncomfortable and weird, but I think it needs to be said. You are not the a-hole. Let's see what Reddit has to say. I firmly believe that you can end a relationship with somebody for whatever reason you want. It's a relationship, not a prison sentence. But honestly, I don't have pussy color as a relationship ender on my 2024 Reddit bingo card. Yeah, I don't think many of us did. Next says, it's the OP, now you have it. Next says, aren't they all pink inside? Mine is and I'm black, so this is confusing. Next says, as a white man, you should see my level of confusion. Had to scroll way too far for this comment. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all fucking pink to some degree, what the hell? This is fucking weird. He never should have said that shit. He's a weirdo, man. Get rid of him. You could do better. I say not the a-hole. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. And let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for divorcing my wife after she refused to help me financially in difficult times? I mean, if y'all are married, what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. And if you're going through a financial difficulty, I'm going through a financial difficulty that's how my marriage works. Maybe not everyone works the same. That's okay until it's not. Well, let's see what the story says. I, 30 male, am divorcing my wife, 30 female, of four years because she did not help me financially when I needed it. I work in a very niche industry and last year or so has been really difficult due to market conditions. Many of my colleagues got laid off and so was I. At the time, I had newly refurnished our home, so I was in debt. My wife also works, but she earned less than me back then. I went to her and asked if she could and help me while I search for work. I proposed that we should sell some of the gold that was given to us at the wedding. We live in Turkey and there is a tradition of giving, giving gold to newlyweds to help them financially. These are meant to be used during difficult times. She rejected the idea and said, I do not want to sell my gold. I tried to reason with her by saying closing the debt would greatly help us to have a more stable financials. She refused and told me to sort it out myself somehow. I asked her to at least use some of her savings and I can pay it back. Context here is that I let her save most of her earnings while paying most of the things myself due to women being vulnerable to financial changes more than men here. I wanted her to build her own savings and made sure to help her with the retirement account as well. I asked her to give me some of her savings for debt and I can pay her back once I sort myself out. She refused that too. This period had been extremely difficult for me. I fell into depression and contemplates, contemplated my choices in life. Funny thing is, everything was going great before this, and I thought we would stay together through thick and thin. My older sister helped me pay the monthly installments during that time. God bless her soul. At the beginning of this year, I found a great job in the same industry and I'm thrilled right now. I could not look at my wife in the same way after what happened and started divorce talks with my lawyer friend of mine. Last month, I let her know my decision and she was served with divorce papers soon after. Was this like a blindsided situation? Cause I don't see nothing in your story talking to her about how like this ain't working for me anymore. For, for her apparently it was an unexpected thing and she was shocked. She tried to talk me out of it, but I was firm in my decision. Families tend to be involved with each other here and that was the case for us too. She put, put families in between as mediators, but I do not want to be married to someone who will not help me during difficult times, especially when I was considering her financial well-being. Most of my family supports my decision, though they would like me to reconsider if possible. I know every other thing is without a problem, but I cannot get over what happened. Am I the evil here? No. No, I don't think you are. I mean, you literally let her keep all of her money. So you pay all the bills and you refurnished your entire home and then you lost your job through no fault of your own. And she's not gonna help you with the debt that you incurred furnishing y'all's house. It's not like you bought yourself a sports car and then when you couldn't make the payments, you were like, please give me some of your money. And she was like, no, go fuck yourself. Like sell your sports car. That is not the situation here, okay? your husband was just trying to pay bills and refurnish y'all's home. And when he got into financial trouble, you were like, mm -hmm. on your own. 
yeah, bitch, you're about to be on your own soon. I say not the a-hole. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Also not the a-hole. After marriage, there is only we. We have this income and her income and we choose to spend them like this. In your case, to build the wife's savings. But when we, that is, the unit that is the family of two, gets a lower income, then we need to decide how we are solving it together. She refused that. So she opted out of belonging to a family unit together with OP. The divorce is a logical conclusion conclusion of what she already chose to do next says yes op just finalized be officially the decision op's wife took i mean that's the right way to look at it he didn't choose this she chose this she chose the violence and he's just following through i say not the a-hole i would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments don't forget we have a playlist of over 250 mi hole videos up here that you can binge please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye